I'm Tom Lehman, Director of Bakery Assistance at the American Institute of Baking. My name is Jeff Zeke, and I'm with the American Institute of Baking as well. And today we're going to uh, do some demonstrations for you on uh, dough mixing, dough rounding, dividing and rounding, and then also we're going to do a little bit of stretching. So we're going to take you through the whole process from mixing of the dough. We're going to say a few words about scaling, uh, about portioning, about the importance of weighing our ingredients. And we're going to run us all the way through the entire dough mixing procedure so you can see just how the dough is supposed to be handled. And we'll walk you through the entire dough management procedure. We're giving you a good, consistent, uniform dough that's going to perform for you on a daily basis. And it's going to give you a great product day in and day out. One thing that you might want to do is verify the fact that uh, you actually have the contents that it says that it is in the, uh, in the bag. And uh, it's about a half a pound uh, light width, including the bag. But typically, if you expect uh, probably about a quarter to three quarters of a pound extra for the, uh, the bag weight. So what we would want to do is maybe just throw a little bit more flour in here to make sure that uh, we have the adequate amount of flour. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to base our formulation on 50 pounds of flour for this particular mix. But one thing that you'll probably want to do is uh, set your ingredients to percentages. And uh, the percentages that we have here uh, is based on flour or sometimes referred to as baker's percent. Everything is based on flour. And so our flour is set at 100% then all of our other ingredients are based off of the amount of flour. But as far as uh, if you wanted to uh, calculate for different sizes of doughs, uh, you can do that quite easily. So if we go to a calculator and we plug that into the calculator, again we take our 56% water, 56, and we multiply that by our number of pounds of flour, 50, and then we divide that by our percentage of flour, which is at 100%, and it'll always be, we'll divide by 100%. We'll see that we come up with that we want to use 28 pounds of water for this particular formula based on 50 pounds. Uh, we generally, when we're mixing a dough, want to start off with uh, adding our water to the mixing bowl first. And uh, we've tempered our water accordingly to adjust for uh, the shop condition, the temperature of the, uh, the shop, uh, and taking into account the, uh, the temperature of the, uh, the flour. And then also taking into account uh, the friction factors, the heat that the, gener that the mixer is going to uh, generate during mixing is something else that you need to. With every dough formula, we have desired dough temperatures that we try to achieve. For most of our pizza doughs, we'd like to achieve a temperature between 80 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The question is, how do I achieve that temperature? This calculation here will take you through that exercise. And some of the things that we need to know, friction factor, FF, FT for flour temperature, RT for room temperature, WT for water temperature, DDT, desired dough temperature, ADT, actual dough temperature. Now we have friction factor, this is something that must be calculated for each dough depending upon the size of the dough that we're running and the type of mixer. But friction factor is nothing more than mixing a dough and we record the room temperature, the flour temperature, and the water temperature that was used to mix that dough. I normally say coldest half water temperature, which should be right around 60. Record the flour temperature, record your room temperature. Mix your dough out until it's satisfactorily mixed, whatever you require for your mixing. When it's completely mixed out and you say, that's, that's properly mixed, in my opinion, multiply that number times three, so three times the actual dough temperature. Then, from that number, subtract the room temperature, the flour temperature, the water temperature. Our particular formula that we're using today, uh, we're going to just run uh, fl water, flour, salt, yeast, and uh, oil. You can add sugar to your formula. This is an optional ingredient. Uh, depending on how you're baking your pizzas, if you're baking in an impingement oven uh, or versus a deck oven, that might dictate whether or not you want to add sugar uh, to your dough. Uh, sugar is going to cause browning. Uh, and uh, for this particular dough, we get uh, plenty of browning without adding the, uh, the sugar. So now we have our water, flour. We're going to add our yeast. The nice thing about uh, instant yeast uh, is that you can uh, 
just put that in right on top. There isn't anything special. Uh, you should not shock instant yeast by adding it directly to cold water. Uh, that's one thing that you do have to uh, uh, be careful about. When working with different forms of yeast, you do have to be careful in what uh, uh, contact they come in with other ingredients such as sugar and salt. Fresh compressed yeast does not do very good coming in contact with uh, sugar and salt, so you have to be cautious about that. So we've added our yeast, and now we're going to add our salt. And uh, because we're working with the instant yeast, the fact that uh, we put the, uh, the salt on top of that, uh, that isn't as big of a deal as if we were working with fresh compressed yeast. So at this point now, we're going to uh, put the uh, bowl onto the mixer and uh, lift the, uh, the bowl into position. Uh, what we have here is what's called an S-type hook. Uh, it has more of a kind of a corkscrew type of agitator uh, as com uh, compared to a J-style type hook, which is more straight up and down. And what tends to happen on those is the dough starts to ride up and wrap around. And if the dough is wrapped up all around the top, you're really not mixing it. The nice thing about the S-style agitator is the dough can only come up so far and then it's pushed right back down into the mixing bowl. So we're going to put this on, and that's how easy it is right there. Uh, we're going to uh, lift the bowl up off of the, uh, the, dole, the, the, uh, the bowl trolley uh, and get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. And then we're going to snap the, uh, the bowl into place. And this is another nice added feature with the new Legacy mixer uh, is the swing, swing out action. But again, it's quite that simple as far as uh, getting it locked into place. Uh, we do have safety guards on there with regards to when we uh, actually turn the agitator on. Uh, when this is open, uh, you cannot turn the agitator on, but you can raise and low, lower the, uh, the mixing bowl. So now we're going to start off by mixing our dough uh, in a, a speed that they refer to as stir. It's just a very gentle agitation. We just want to uh, get the uh, ingredients uh, starting to combine. I had mentioned that we're going to add some uh, oil to our uh, dough formulation uh, and uh, we like to uh, delay the addition of the oil as to uh, uh, prevent interfering of hydration of the, uh, the flour. It's very important that we uh, get the, uh, the flour adequately hydrated, so we want to give the flour every chance to grab onto as much water as possible. Uh, and then at that point, when we don't see any more dry flour in the bottom of the, uh, the mixing bowl, then we will add the, uh, the oil. Uh, is we want to just get all the ingredients incorporated together. So I think now we can uh, turn this on to the, uh, to the stir speed. And we'll mix for a, probably about a period of about two minutes or until we observe that that uh, dry flour is no longer in the, uh, the bottom of the mixing bowl. And uh, so we can see that uh, we don't see any more dry ingredients down there in the bottom. So we'll just uh, stop it. Uh, you can do. You can approach adding the oil two different ways. Uh, you can add. You can remove the uh, or slide the guard out of the way and add in the oil, or you can add it while while it's mixing. And the uh, the choice is yours. Uh, they do have uh, an ingredient chute on here for you to be able to add things through the uh, through the safety guard as as you're mixing. Uh, so that makes it convenient to do that. So we're going to again uh, go back to our stir speed, and uh, we're going to start the uh, the mixer up.